Hey there, so understand that you want to install my server. Well, we'll use this one elf squared, a server that I make, as an example. So we scroll down to the additional file section on CurseForge, of course. And you see we have one that's enabled server. And we're going to download it. And you download it by clicking the download button. And then your browser of choice will download it, usually to your download folder and this is where it'll end up being if you don't have your own archiver program installed like I use WinRAR uh, you'll be able to right click this and choose unzip from Windows or open in my case we're just gonna go ahead and extract it to one of the name things we'll hit yes to all if that ever comes up In a moment, it'll be completely extracted. Go into that folder, and you want to find this folder, and you want to go ahead and cut it and move it someplace, like maybe to a solid state drive, and paste it in. Granted, what I'm showing you is for Windows. Now, everything about installing the server is actually listed in this file here called install server, that is a text file. And if you just look at it with your uh, favorite editor, you'll see this is all the information from the server page that's on the mod pack page. And it just covers for Windows, Linux, both Windows and Linux. And then again, both Windows and Linux, it tells you how to run the server. Very simple, very straightforward. Also, there's a curtain installer file, and it contains a link to the current forge that the pack is built against. Okay. Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to open the command prompt here. So you do that by clicking File, and then just choose Open Command Prompt. And that's going to allow us to do what we got to do next. At this point, if you're in Windows, and you're in Windows 7, 8, or 10, because 7, 8, and 10 all have PowerShell, you just run the install bat program. Just type install. All this text comes up telling you what you have to do if you get an error. In other words, you run anything prior to Windows 7. Now, if you were in Linux, you would have ran dot slash install dot sh, and everything would just be done for you, and there's just nothing for you to do manually. This downloads the server, and it runs the Java command line that will install the server's support library files. And at the end here, in a moment, it'll tell us what we have to run to make the server run. On Linux, we'll use the Start Keep Alive program to start a screen session that runs the Keep Alive script that'll keep the server running inside of a process that'll keep running when you log out of your server. I would say Windows is probably the most, maybe probably the most difficult portion of this because my scripts are all designed for uh, Linux or Unix. Take your pick, it runs both. There you go. The server is officially installed. And so now you got the server installed, you've got two choices for running it. You can, uh, you can do those commands. Java-jar modpack server.jar and uh, and if you just hit enter now it'll come up with the uh, the GUI version and whatever you do don't close the DOS window that you run this from because it will kill the GUI because the GUI is essentially a child of the DOS window But you can see you have a managed console here that you can scroll back and you can interact with your players in.
However, I'm going to kill it so we can go on to the next thing. You can also, on Windows 7, 8, and 9, you can just double click the Start Server Batch Program. It'll do essentially the same thing as what the GUI is doing, except it'll run the console in one of the windows. This window back here will attempt to restart the server here if the server should crash. It may or may not work. I have not fully tested it. And if you come up with fixes for my scripts, please fix them and send me back comments as to what needs to be done. Okay, we're going to get out of here too, because we're just done with that. Terminate the batch job. Oh, sure. Okay. Now, what if you're on Linux? Well, let's we'll look on my uh, test server here. For, uh, Let's go here. So you would want to copy the URL here, copy link. So here we are is root. Let's imagine that we have a directory called TT. Let's imagine that was the root directory. So you would w get the file from the link. See, I pasted that in, and then dash o. So it'll be something more meaningful than download server dot zip. That's a capital O, by the way. You can use curl dash o if you want. I prefer w get, and then you would unzip that file. And make sure there's no other processes. And then go into that server's folder. And then at this point, you would just do dot slash install dot sh. It'll grab everything and do it lot the way the uh, Windows side did. And then we can start the server after it's done with slash start keep alive. And you see that's starting up the server and then people can connect to the IP address on this port. Which will be 25.565 by default. Okay. So... That concludes uh, explaining to you how to install the server in both a Windows and a Linux environment. Thank you.